I'm going to give you 20 business analytics concepts in just a few minutes. This is both a great way for you to test yourself and see if you know these concepts, but also learn them in case you don't. Knowing all of them will help you shine during a job interview and actually land the job. We're going to cover some basic concepts and some advanced concepts from all aspects of business analytics, and I can almost guarantee that there will be some you've never heard about and some that you're already familiar with. Also, keep in mind that this is going to be very fast and you don't need to remember everything. Just having heard about them will be very useful as well, and you're brain will subconsciously remember more than you think. Let's get started. All right, so a really important thing in business or analytics to understand data is to be able to divide it into separate groups, basically grouping data. The term here is market segmentation, where we divide a target to market into groups. For example, a beauty brand might categorize its customers by their age, their income, and their customer behaviors, and use the segmentation for their marketing efforts to reach their best customers. Now, when you have a business, the only way to make money isn't to acquire new customers. A really effective way is by selling more to your already existing customers because they already like and trust you or the brand. To evaluate how much a business will be able to sell to a customer and basically the total value of this one customer, we use something called customer lifetime value, CLV, and sometimes also called LTV or long term value. For example, Netflix or a streaming service might calculate how long a customer will likely end up paying, will likely keep paying over several years so they know how much money they can expect to make in the future. Very important stuff. Now let's get over to the more physical goods. A supply chain, getting products from supplier to customer can be really complex and it's very important that everything works. Imagine if Amazon had weeks of delivery time instead of days. Nobody would be using Amazon at all. So companies evaluate their processes to improve efficiency and this process is called supply chain analysis. Now I want to talk about the company itself because the supply chain is not the only thing you'll want to evaluate. It's also important to evaluate the entire business and the business idea. One effective way to do this is through a SWOT analysis. It's often taught at business schools and such, and it's basically evaluating strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats all at once. A small business might conduct a SWOT analysis to evaluate how they can stand out and succeed in their market, and what gets measured gets managed. If you don't know problems, you can't fix them, and if you don't know opportunities, you can't take them. Now, in business analytics, risks will be a huge factor. Every single action you take and Thing you decide to change in business comes with upsides and potential risks. So to minimize these, you'll want to evaluate them first. We can start by identifying and try to minimize business risks. For instance, a finance institution might have to really carefully consider who they lend money to, basically where the risk is worth the reward. And this is called risk management. All right, so back to the customers. The customer experience is something you can analyze in an attempt to improve and make it smoother. But to do this, you might want to visualize the customer's experience with your company Company, the steps they take. If they land on your homepage, they have a certain path they take to buy a product and receiving the product. This can all be mapped out and it's called customer journey mapping. But all companies have competitors or unless you're running a complete monopoly, which can be a pretty cool situation, but let's skip that for now. To improve your company's position, it can be a good idea to evaluate competition and their strengths and weaknesses. I mean, there is a reason why Instagram stole a ton of features from TikTok and likewise with other social medias. They look at others and see what's working in real time and they take inspiration. This analysis is called competitive analysis. All right, so you don't have to be a finance expert to be in business analytics. I mean, unless you're going to work in finance, perhaps. But I'm going to show you a term that's nice to know. It's called financial forecasting, and it's about predicting future revenues and financial performance. Let's say we have a construction company. They may want to predict future costs for their projects, how much money they'll make depending on the current market and other important stuff. Again, by understanding the data, the company can make smart decisions. A part of the analytics when it comes to businesses can be around pricing. Pricing has to match or exceed the value perceived by the potential customers. Too expensive, they're not going to buy it, but if it's too cheap, it can come with issues as well. I mean, the company needs to make money, right? That is why pricing strategies are so important. Here we basically determine how to price products properly. We do this by analyzing other products, looking at our competitors, and just testing what works. Now, Black Friday and Christmas are some of the best seasons for many businesses, especially retail stores and companies that sell commodities and fun products, easy purchases. But, but companies need to prepare for this. We've seen many times that supply chains break, they can't meet the demands, 
and the thousands of purchases in a few hours. Their websites crash, their delivery services get delayed, and stock runs out. This is just one example of why sales trend analysis is so important. We want to identify sales data to identify trends and use this to run our company better. If this retail store reviewed past seasonal sales, they could have just planned their inventory and increased capacity for the holidays and the sales and avoided most of the problems. Another term that might be useful to know is about comparing against industry best practices. And this word is called benchmarking. A hotel chain might benchmark its guest services against the top hotels in the industry to see where they can improve. Without a clear objective, it can be really hard to improve. So by benchmarking, we make this process much more clear. The next one, many of you guys will be familiar with. So in a company, there can be discrepancies around how the company is actually doing. Are they performing well? And especially for larger companies, if you work in a specific team, it's hard to see what's actually going on in the company and how you're contributing. That's why we have KPIs or key performance indicators. Digital marketing is very popular and it's an industry where you as a business analyst could work in, whether it's a department of a company or an agency. Here we may use KPIs to track website traffic and their conversion rates and see if they meet our expectations and our objectives. Now, as I talked about before, lifetime value of a customer is really important how long they stay. When we're trying to figure this out, we take a look at the churn, basically the customer attrition rate. How many customers stop paying? This is very relevant for subscription services. For example, if Netflix are losing 3% of their customers every month, they need to gain at least 3% new customers or their business is declining. And if they improve a few percent each month, they can make a lot more money in the future because they'll have more customers paying over time, increasing every single month. And this is all called churn analysis. But the most important thing for a business are the customers themselves. I mean, of course, they're paying you. To keep customers, we need them to be happy. That's why we can do a sentiment analysis. We can go through feedback forms or any way we received customer feedback and try to analyze their emotions and how they're actually experiencing our products and our services. If you own a restaurant, you might do this to see if people are happy with the food or if you should perhaps change your recipe or your offer. Okay, I know that a few of these terms overlap, but it's a great idea to know about them all regardless. So the next one is predictive analytics, which you might be able to guess what it means. It's basically just using historical data to predict future outcomes, and it's very useful. Next, we have ROI, or return on investment. We can analyze and look at the return on investment to see if an action is worth taking. Should we spend money on this marketing platform? Is the return on investment actually worth it? Now, ROI can be short term, you might make the money back right away. But if you're a company like Netflix or Spotify, chances are that you'll make a good return on investment for into the future over many months. So a ROI doesn't just mean a one-time purchase. It all depends on how you look at it. A similar concept is cost-benefit analysis. It's basically ROI, but seeing if the costs are with the benefits when we make a decision. If the company wants to hire a new employee, they may want to look at whether it's going to be worth the cost and the new hassle compared to benefits of having a new employee helping out in the company, if it's actually worth spending the time on it. Now back to the physical store. Inventory is really important. If we don't have anything to sell, then we can't sell anything. So we use inventory management to manage the flow of goods in and out. But we also don't want to store too much. If it's food, then you actually can't store too much. So you need to analyze and plan. And this can be really complex and important for the company. All right, so in analytics, we sometimes have large data sets that we want to extract useful information from. And this is called data mining. Lastly, as many of the things I've talked about in this video, it's about enhancing and improving something. In this case, it's about enhancing business processes. A delivery company could analyze their delivery routes to improve their efficiency, save time and save money in the process. This is called process improvement. I hope this video was helpful. If you want more videos like this, consider subscribing. I really appreciate it. And I'll leave some business analytics resources in the description, but also check out this video next. I think it's going to be helpful for you if you enjoyed this video.